Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation. You want to call it rational, radical, both, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so this is our equation. x plus x divided by square root of x squared minus 1 is equal to 35 over 12. And we're going to be solving for real x. All right, let's get started. Now, if you ever get an equation like this, typically, what are you supposed to do, right? What would you do normally? Okay, you would isolate the radical part, right? So that would look like this. And then you would subtract x from it, and you would make a common denominator. It would look like this, 35 minus 12x divided by 12. And then you would probably multiply, cross multiply, in other words. Uh, so you would get something like, okay, that's x squared, square root of x squared minus 1, multiply by 35 minus 12x is equal to 12x. Cool. And then we can go ahead and square both sides, and that's going to give us x squared minus 1, multiply by 35 minus 12x squared is equal to 144x squared. So, and you'll be getting a quartic equation from here, because you're going to get x squared times x squared. Put everything on the same side, you'll get 144x squared, that'll be 100x, uh, 144x to the fourth power, so on and so forth. It's a long story, right? But the problem with that is, you may get a quartic which is hard to solve. You may get a quartic which is easy to solve. Doesn't matter. I'm going to show you a different method today, okay? For this problem, we're going to use a very, very special substitution. And we actually use that substitution all the time in calculus, uh, but sometimes you don't think about it when it's an equation, right? Uh, so, for example, if you had the integral of square root of x squared minus 1, you would probably think of a good way uh, to replace um, x with something, right? So that's what we're going to do here. Without further ado, let's get started. Now, what is a reasonable uh, substitution here, right? Well, since we have x squared minus 1, we're going to replace x with secant alpha. Alpha is just any angle. And of course, it's not going to be just any angle because here we have some restrictions. We're going to talk about those and we'll apply them to our problem. So x can be the secant of an angle. Why? Because we, first of all, notice that x squared minus 1 is greater than 0, which means that x squared needs to be greater than 1. x is greater than 1 or less than negative 1. But x cannot be negative because if x is negative, the radical is positive, you're not going to get a positive quantity. So we also have the restriction that x is greater than 0. When you put those two together, this is what you're going to be getting x needs to be greater than 1. And it makes sense when you replace x with secant alpha because, first of all, as you know, the domain for secant, um, I should say range, right? Not domain. So the range for the secant function is outside of negative 1 and 1, right? Because you know that secant is 1 over cosine and cosine has to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive. Secant needs to be outside that because it's the reciprocal. Okay, cool. So now, what are we going to do? But why do we use secant though, right? Why don't we use something else? Well, here's the good thing. If you replace x with secant, x squared becomes secant squared and x squared minus 1 becomes secant squared minus 1. And we know that it's equal to tangent squared. So something nice is going to come out of this, just like in the integrals where we replace uh, x with secant alpha. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed and let's see what we're going to get from here. And we got to make sure that we use this condition at the end. X is greater than 1. Awesome. Okay. What am I going to do? Uh, well, I'm going to replace X with secant alpha here. So let's change maybe colors. Let's get something nicer, maybe like this. Okay. So this is going to be secant alpha. And then X is secant alpha again and over. We notice that X squared minus 1 is equal to tangent squared alpha. And x needs to be greater than 1, x needs to be positive. So we can safely say that alpha needs to be in the first quadrant, right? And this implies that the square root of, you know, uh, tangent squared is going to be tangent alpha, not negative tangent alpha by absolute value. So this is tangent alpha, right? And this whole thing is equal to 35 over 12. Awesome. Let's simplify this a little bit. Uh, we can replace secant with 1 over cosine. And then for this one, I can write 
1 over cosine and sine over cosine. And when you flip and multiply, obviously, you're going to get rid of, I'll probably change colors here, you're going to get rid of the cosines, right? We know that cosine is not 0. And you're going to be getting something like 1 over cosine plus 1 over sine is equal to 35 over 12. Okay, what is that supposed to mean? Well, the sum of the reciprocals, right? Okay, but we don't want to use it in this form. Uh, let's go ahead and clear all the fractions. So let's make a common denominator, multiply both sides, and so on and so forth. So if I make a common denominator, the top is going to be sine alpha plus cosine alpha multiply by 12. So it's going to be 12 sine alpha cosine alpha. And the bottom is going to be sine alpha times cosine alpha multiply by 35. It's going to be 35 sine alpha times cosine alpha. Okay, cool. What is next? Well, uh, we made a mistake here, I think, right? I just realized one of them had to be a yes, sum, right? We just got rid of that. Okay, so this should be 12 times sine alpha plus cosine alpha. There you go. Now, our goal is to solve for sine alpha or cosine alpha or something like that. So, you know, when we get sine alpha plus cosine alpha or sine alpha minus cosine alpha in an expression, it almost always makes sense to square both sides. Why is that so? Because when you square this, let's call that y, by the way. The reason why I don't call it x is because x is what we called at the beginning, right? So x is our original variable. We're going to go get back to it. But let's, for now, let's just call this y, and then let's explore what we can do. Well, here's the thing. If I know sine alpha plus cosine alpha, I can find sine alpha times cosine alpha. How can I do that? Well, I can square both sides. That's why we call it y, right? Because that can help us. Okay. This is equal to y. And now I'll be squaring both sides. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. A nice color. All right. Square both sides. And you should be getting the following. Now, what is sine alpha plus cosine alpha squared? Okay. It's a plus b quantity squared. So it's sine squared alpha plus 2 sine alpha cosine alpha plus cosine squared alpha. Without further ado, this is going to be 1. Great. And now what we get from here is we basically get sine alpha times cosine alpha. Okay. So these two add up to 1. If you subtract it from y squared and divide by 2, you'll be able to get sine alpha times cosine alpha in terms of y. So now we know this. And we also know that sine alpha plus cosine alpha is equal to y. We can actually go ahead and use these in our equation. How? Well, I'm going to need uh, some, some other equation that I can use, right? Basically. Okay. So let's see what we can use from here. So we... We have this equation, 1 over cosine alpha plus 1 over sine alpha. We multiply both sides, and we got this. Okay, this is what we're, we're trying to use. So now, what I can do is, in this equation here, notice that I have a nice equation, right? In that equation, actually, I can go ahead and uh, write everything in terms of y. For example, sine alpha plus cosine alpha is y, so it's going to be 12y, is equal to 35 times sine alpha times cosine alpha, which is going to equal y squared minus 1 over 2. Awesome. So this is the equation we're getting. Okay, let's do, you know, what, what needs to be done. Multiply by 2, 24y is equal to 35y squared minus 35. And then from here, you should be putting everything on the same side, on the right-hand side, and you should be getting this equation. Okay? All right. So, uh, let's see. It's not... Let me make sure that I get, I get it. I get the right expression. Y squared... Yeah, okay, that, that looks good. Okay, cool. Y squared minus 1 is equal to sine alpha plus cosine alpha. Okay, that looks good. Awesome. I want to make sure that we, we don't get anything wrong here. Okay. Sine alpha times cosine alpha is going to be y squared minus 1 over 
two. Okay, sounds good. All right, so the next step is basically solving this equation. Now, how do we solve this equation? Okay, good question, right? W one method is multiply the 35 by the 35, which is gonna be 1,225 by the way, and then look for two numbers whose you know, product is given a certain way and whose sum is given another way. So here's the X method that I'm talking about. So first multiply 35 by negative 35, negative 1,225. That's our product. And the sum is negative 24. So if we can find two numbers, whose product is this and whose sum is this, then we are good to go. But finding those numbers, you know, can somewhat be a little complicated, okay? So what we can do is we can actually use the quadratic formula. Why don't we use that, right? Let's go ahead and use it. This is factorable, like you can try 5y, 7y, and then some different combos, you can get it. But let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula, which we almost always use. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c. I don't think this is gonna be very easy either. So. I changed my mind and I'll go back to all good old factoring. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to put a 5y here and a 7y here. And then this can be factored in a number of ways. Five and seven, seven and five, 35 and one, whatever, so on and so forth. But I'll try the five and seven first. So let's see what happens. We get a 35 here and we get a 35 here. That's gonna give me 70 or zero. That's not gonna help. So I don't think this is a good way to, you know, use. Maybe I'll use seven and five. Okay, that's the good approach. And let me tell you why. Five times five is 25 because we're, we're going to, you know, cross multiply here. Seven times seven is 49 and 49 minus 25 is equal to 24. We didn't get negative 24, but that's okay because we can arrange that. Now, obviously one of these numbers have to be negative and I wanna get a negative, so I'm, I'm gonna make the larger product negative. Does that make sense? I hope it does because this method always works. It could be time consuming sometimes, but you know, it's definitely easier than quadratic formula, in my opinion. Anyways, so let's write it this way. 5y plus five multiplied by seven y minus seven, which is equal to zero. So, you know, this is kind of interesting because, oops, I messed up. I'm not supposed to write it that way. Yeah, we multiply, we cross multiply, but when we write it, we have to write it this way. Okay, cool. So 5y minus seven, what was I thinking? 7y plus 5 is equal to 0. Okay, cool. So from here, set it equal to 0, you get y equals 7 over 5. And then from the second one, you get y equals negative 5 over 7. Okay, here's the problem. y is equal to sine alpha plus cosine alpha. If alpha is in the first quadrant, sine plus cosine cannot be negative. So we reject this solution and proceed with this one. Awesome. What is y? y is sine alpha plus cosine alpha, so let's go ahead and replace that, like back substitute. So this is what I have now, correct? Okay, awesome. What am I gonna do after this? Well, I got sine alpha plus cosine alpha, so if I could also get sine alpha times cosine alpha, that would be nice, but I do have it. Look, remember we said that you could write sine alpha times cosine alpha in terms of y. And sine alpha times cosine alpha is equal to y squared minus 1 over 2. But y is 7 over 5. Therefore, we can find sine alpha cosine alpha from here. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and do it. So sine alpha times cosine alpha is going to equal 7 over, two, 7 over 5 squared, which is 49 over 25. Minus 1 divided by 2. Let me do the math here. 49 minus 25 is 24. 24 divided by 2 is 12. 12 over 25. Here we go. So now I got this system. How am I gonna solve it? Well, uh, you can just write the quadratic whose sum and product of roots are given. So let's say this is the quadratic that I'm looking for, for sine alpha, cosine alpha. In other words, this is the equation whose roots are sine alpha, cosine alpha. So it's gonna be like t squared minus seven over five t plus 12 over 25. Here's another quadratic we, you need to solve. But when you solve this, you're gonna find sine alpha and cosine alpha at the same time. Cool. How am I gonna solve it? Let's see if we can factor this. Uh, three over five, yep, I got it. Negative three over five and negative four over five. Beautiful, right? Because their sum is negative seven over five and their product is 12 over 25. So I got it. 
I have t minus 3 over 5 multiplied by t minus 4 over 5 equals 0. And from here, t equals 3 over 5 and t equals 4 over 5. Beautiful. But what is t? Well, t is sine alpha or cosine alpha. How about we use this for cosine alpha? Okay, cool. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because if one of them is this, the other one is going to be the other one. So it doesn't really matter. But the reason why I go by cosine, it has a, there is a reason for that. Because if you remember, go back at the beginning, what did we say? We said, oh, let x be secant alpha. Oh, and secant is what? 1 over cosine, the reciprocal. Therefore, we got the answer. What are we looking for? We know that x is equal to secant alpha, which is... 1 over cosine alpha, so x would be 5 thirds and x would be 5 fourths. So those would be my solutions. And this equation has two solutions in the first quadrant. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. It's trigonometric at the same time. It's a radical, so we use trigonometry to solve it. Please let me know. Comment, like, subscribe, do something. And then I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be a great puzzle. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.